throw in another outfit and then she changes to go to the beach and her hair can be long and then suddenly it's really short and then it's in a giant braid and then it's long again and it doesn't matter because she's Barbie. She can do that. Hi, I'm Margot Robbie and this is my life in looks. This is from The Wolf of Wall Street. I remember being really worried that I was gonna stab Leo in the face. My first scene in the movie, I'm wearing like this vintage Herve Leger bandage dress. For Naomi, for this character, it's like her sexuality was her currency in this world and especially like the effect she could have on Jordan was the way that she would control or manipulate situations. So what she wore was very much a part of that or what she didn't wear. Oh, okay, so this was when I was going to the Oscars, as you can tell. I kind of look like an Oscar. I was dressed by Tom Ford and I felt really special because I think he only dresses like one person every year at the Oscars. My first American Vogue cover. I was promoting Tarzan. I played Jane, Alexander Skarsgård played Tarzan, hence the, uh, the theme that we latched onto, I think, for this shoot, the leopard print. It was just such a fun shoot. Merton Marcus shot it. Wolf of Wall Street was like the big shift in my career, and then this was a year or two after that. Harley Quinn, there's lots to talk about here. I played Harley Quinn, who's based on a comic book character. This is the first time Harley Quinn had been on the big screen. You can get a lot from a character just by how they, they look. I mean, you just look at that character and you're like, that is just bad news. She's got daddy issues, she's in a toxic relationship. She's been through stuff, I had all these tattoos. Like this one down here says, lucky you, <laughs> right above her crotch. I actually pitched the studio Birds of Prey whilst we were shooting the first Suicide Squad. It was a couple of years before we got it going. I really wanted to see Harley like in a girl gang, interacting with other ladies. And this is I, Tonya. It's the second film that we produced and I played Tonya Harding. She was caught up in this big skating scandal in the early 90s. We were replicating looks as closely as we possibly could to the real Tonya Harding and the skating outfits she wore and the way her hair was. She didn't have money and she would sew her own costumes. We took all of that into consideration with the materials we would use. Wouldn't buy anything from anywhere expensive, plus we were on a budget, so we couldn't afford to do that anyway. Deborah, who was a makeup artist, would always hand me like the eyeshadow palette and be like, stick your finger in it, rub it on your eyes. Tonya wouldn't have had makeup brushes. It's like, she's not great at doing makeup. She shouldn't, you shouldn't look like a professional did you up. Even when you're going to the Olympics, she was doing her own makeup. This was when I was nominated for I, Tonya. I'm wearing Chanel, loved that dress. That was a really big night for me because it was the first, you know, first time I was nominated in the best actress category. I, Tonya being in the Oscars conversation was kind of like Tonya Harding making it to the Olympics. It was just kind of like, everyone was like, how did you guys get here? <laughs> this like little raggedy indie film that just came out at Toronto and now you're at the Oscars. So we definitely felt like the underdogs. It was, it was fun. Ah, I'm playing Queen Elizabeth I here in Mary, Queen of Scots. Alexandra Byrne, our costume designer, did so many cool things that are kind of impossible to the eye, but when you know what she was doing, you're just like, wow, that's really clever. For example, she had everyone's costumes made out of denim, which was just such a cool and weird choice. And it was just, had this kind of like structure and this look. I was in constant pain and I couldn't breathe and I was my movements were totally restricted and it was perfect for the character. That's exactly what I needed. The portrayal of her in this film anyway is that she is completely trapped by her position. I'd love to break out of it, but can't. You can't even walk fast in that costume. You're just so restrained and everything has to be so controlled. In real life, Queen Elizabeth I got smallpox. So we played into that, that she would have been left really scarred and that's why she packs on the makeup. This was, um, I think, the London premiere for Mary Queen of Scots. And I'm wearing Rodate. I loved that dress. I always feel really good when I wear Rodate gowns. They're very structured, but they actually look just very like soft and feminine and, you know, beautiful. Thinking of Queen Elizabeth I, it's just, or an ice skater, or a figure skater, or a ballerina, whatever. I feel like you have to make it look delicate and feminine and easy and soft, but actually underneath, it's like a lot of brute force and a lot of work. Um, this is my first time on the red carpet at Cannes Film Festival. I was wearing an archival Chanel outfit. We were there for the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood premiere. We found our Chanel way of wearing trousers. It was fun and then the hair and makeup was very much like Sharon Tate sort of inspired 60s kind of look. Another Vogue cover. 
We did this shoot with Inez and Venude and shot it in New York. There was a concept that I was playing lots of different characters. There was one where I've got like bangs and this like, again, I in my mind, I was like this 60s kind of English party girl. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's what I latched onto. And then there was another one where I've kind of got like this short wig and I'm wearing like a suit, very masculine. And in my mind, I was like a male director. This is from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm playing Sharon Tate. I am literally holding a first edition of Tess of the Durbills, which Quentin gave me after that day of shooting. He said, you keep that. This look, this costume was special for a lot of reasons. One, he he wanted the white go-go boots that was written in the script. I had this black Chanel purse because Sharon Tate always had her black Chanel purse. And I remember when I talked to her sister, she mentioned as well, she's like, she always had that purse. She loved that purse. Playing Sharon Tate was like being on holiday every day because she was just so happy and lovely and like lighter than air and just this golden floaty angel. And so I just felt like, happy and floaty every day as well. Shortly after this, my character walks into a movie theater to see herself on the big screen and she kind of kicks off her go-go boots and puts her feet up and settles in to watch the movie. But my feet were dirty because I'd been walking around set. <laughs> they stayed dirty in the movie because Quentin said, don't, don't clean them. Someone ran in to do it and he was like, no, it's real, keep it. Ah, this isn't that long ago. This is the London premiere for Amsterdam. This is Celine and I loved it. I found over the years that when you do a premiere in Leicester Square in London, there's always a ton of wind. So you kind of got to pick your outfit to work with that. And if you pick the right outfit, it can add a whole lot of drama and look amazing. On the flip side, if you pick the wrong outfit, it totally destroys your look. I was very much dressing for the weather. <laughs> This was also not that long ago. This is Bottega. This was the Governor's Award. The material is so beautiful, but I love the color of this dress. I actually, funnily enough, right before I left home, I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm pulling this off. And then as soon as I like stepped onto the carpet, my phone was blowing up. All my girlfriends were texting me like, you look amazing. Felt great by the end of the night. After 10 years of going to red carpet events, and for sure for the first couple of years, I had major imposter syndrome. Where every time I'd go, I was like, I can't believe they've let me in. Someone's gonna notice that I don't belong here. And they're gonna kick me out of Hollywood. So before these photos, everyone, what you don't see is actually right around the back. There is a huge line. When I walked in, I had like 30 people to say hi to. I was like, oh, there's Greta, go say hi, Greta. Oh, there's Emerald, go say, there's Carrie. There. You know, like so many people that I've worked with over the years are all standing in this line and you go to these things and you're saying hi to everyone and you realize like, yeah, oh wow, I don't have that imposter syndrome anymore. <laughs> I'm really in this industry. It's not this wonderful dream that I'm gonna wake up from and it's all gonna disappear. It's like, no, it's real. Barbie. We didn't even plan this shot. I was just laughing about something and our stills photographer on set caught it. The clothes are a huge part of this movie and a huge part of Barbie. Like everything in the Barbie movie, it's super superficial, but it's also <laughs> incredibly profound at the same time. She can put on a suit and she's a lawyer. She can put on a space helmet and she's an astronaut. She can do all these things and she was doing it back in a time when women couldn't even have their own bank accounts. And she owned her own car and she owned her own house. And she had a cute boyfriend, but he was kind of like an accessory. There's always been outrage around Barbie. She was the first woman doll. Suddenly like little girls are playing with a doll and people are like, I guess they're imagining that they could be a woman, but that's not all they were imagining. They were imagining having their own house, having their own car, having their own careers. You have to imagine that that had some sort of impact. The biggest touch point for us was that everything in this movie had to be authentically artificial. It has to be really fake. Everything had to be tangible. If you're gonna see the sky, it had to be painted. You had to be able to see that it was a painted backdrop. Barbie does Vogue. This is what we got to play with, all those similar things we played with in Barbie Land, that warped sense of scale, the changing of characters and careers with every look, the kind of impossible pretty hair and clothes and accessories. Thank you, Vogue. That was my life in looks.